Hi everybody, Dan Oman here with some exciting news. DRF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, taking a look at race number 10 at Gulfstream Park on Saturday. Let's throw up the field for the Fred W. Hooper Stakes. It is a grade three. It is one of seven graded stakes on Pegasus World Cup Saturday at Gulfstream Park. And you've got a couple of pretty classy horses in this race, Mike. The number one fearless, trained by Todd Pletcher, multiple graded stakes winner at Gulfstream. He just seems to, to hulk up at Gulfstream for Pletcher. He's in good form. And then you've got Speaker's Corner, a horse that has just showed brilliance at times in his career and is very lightly raced for Bill Mott. Yeah, Speaker's Corner feels like, you know, in a lot of ways, just the key to the race, Dan. He's run some some very fast races. He's got good speed in it. You know, he's the horse in here with, you know, most of the upside um, as your morning line favorite. I don't know what to say about Fearless. You like this horse. I've never really liked him. Um, you know, you're certainly right about his form at Gulfstream Park. He really likes it here. And, and it's it's very odd to watch him run at Gulfstream because he has really good speed over this track. And he almost he almost never does anywhere else. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector. And Mike just made a very good point. I'm a little surprised to see Fearless near the back of the pack on the pace projector because I do think he has the tactical speed to adapt and stay at least in mid-pack. Liam, his uncoupled stablemate, is likely to show speed stepping up in class. But Speaker's Corner figures to be right off of his hip. Speaker's Corner figures to be in the thick of things, if not in front, turning into the stretch. Yeah, I would expect Speaker's Corner to be right up close. I, I, I thought outside of that, um, you know, the rest of the way this thing might play out, I thought it was, you know, pretty hard to tell. You know, I certainly feel like you could get speed from, you know, the, they have Chivalry, the five last on the pace projector. I felt like you could get speed from that horse um, in this spot. Um, you know, certainly the six, Liam, I guess he could go for it. He's not exactly a bullet, but I, I guess he'll be, you know, up close in this race. Even the number three, Dan, Bone Ray's on. There are times when he just, out of nowhere, it seems like, shows up with speed and runs good races. Well, let's watch Fearless's most recent race, the Grade 3 Harlan's Holiday, a two-turn race, and he just got a perfect trip. He broke fine. He sat off the two pace horses. He assumes command, and he is now off to the races. A 99 buyer speed figure. He beat a decent horse in Queen's Plate winner, Mighty Heart. But other than that, it wasn't the strongest field in the world, but he continues to run good races at Gulfstream, and he handles the one-turn mile. Yeah, all those things are true. He likes it here. You know, again, I'm not, you know, a huge fan of this horse, but obviously he's got races that are going to give him a real chance in here if he can sit the right trip in this race. Um, you know, he got the job done last time. It was actually a pretty easy win. I wasn't, you know, blown away by it. I, I thought he ran fine in there. You mentioned Mighty Hearts, a pretty nice horse. It's a better synthetic horse, though, than he is a dirt horse. I don't know. I guess Fearless could win, Dan. I'm, well, you know, once again, I'm not betting him. Payne, the number two, closed out his six-year-old campaign the right way with a victory at Tampa Bay Downs. Now, he was entered for $75,000 in the race we're going to show you, and the race didn't exactly come back very fast, 81, but he has a lot of work to do in the stretch, Mike. He is last with three-sixteenths of a mile to run, and he finds a way. He certainly does. I mean, this was, you know, uh, Ant Antonio Gallardo really taking a chance there, Dan. He did not go outside in the stretch, and he almost got stopped there. It ultimately worked out for him, and after that, Payne did the rest. A, a really easy and comfortable win for him. I like this horse. I, I know this is a really tough spot for him, um, and I think it's going to be hard to beat the favorite in here, but this is the other horse that I'm using. Um, this horse ran several really good races. I know you have to go back to, you know, sort of early 2020 to get to them, but he hasn't been doing that much racing since. So it might look like he's in bad form, but there's a lot of layoffs here. I think there were some things going on, issues with this horse. If he's back and feeling good, I think he can be competitive in here. He's going to be a big price. Bone Ray Zone, the number three, has banked $700,000 in his career. We haven't seen him since the middle of November when he caught an in and outer Sir Alfred James on one of the days where Sir Alfred James was actually in. He just didn't do much running that day. I'm not sure I love the blinkers move. I wonder if Jack Sisterson signed a de desperation, perhaps. Yeah, I wonder about that, too. We'll, we'll see what he does. I mean, he's one of those horses. I feel like he's hard to make 
you know, a really strong case for in a race like this one. Um, but again, it's just worth noting that every once in a while, this horse will just jump up and run a fast race out of nowhere. The one turn miles, no problem for him. Um, you know, he's the kind of horse. So I feel like if you're playing, you know, sort of, uh, you know, tries and supers, maybe you want to try to get him in there at a price. Officiating the number four found a great spot for a graded stakes win last time out. Let's watch the Mr. Prospector stakes. It just didn't seem like a strong race on paper. The buyer came back 87. Officiating is going to make the lead in here, and he's on his left lead right now. And you see Dennis's moment to the outside, and it's almost like officiating saying, come get me, Dennis's moment. Come get me. And Dennis's moment hmm. doesn't come get him. Yeah, Dennis's moment can't find a finish. Um, you'll see uh, endorsed to finish in uh, right where he wants to, getting up for second at the end. I'm not going to knock officiating for winning that race, Dan. Um, he started out with, it felt like he had a lot of potential early on for Bill Mott. It took him a while to get there. And it does feel like he's in good form right now. I just don't happen to like him in this race. Chivalry was second behind Tis the Law in the 2020 Florida Derby, but he's better in these one-turn races. And maybe he's just learned a new gear as he's gotten older. Mike's right. This one showed a lot of early speed earlier in his career, but he's come from out of it in his last few. Watch his last race at Tampa Bay Downs. This was a state-bred stakes race. He's the favorite, and you see him widest on the outside. He has work to do, and he's just better than these horses. He grinds them down going seven-eighths. Yeah, they found the right spot for him here. He came with a nice run from out of it, and he gets the job done. He could be closer to the pace if he has to in here. It's good to know for his connections that if they wind up going fast early in this race, that he could still sit and make one run. Um, I thought he was in too tough in this race, but he's a very nice horse. I have no idea what to make of the number six, Liam, a five-year-old with only five lifetime starts. Todd Pletcher found a great spot for him in his return off a year-plus layoff last time out at Gulfstream. Entry-level allowance. Let's watch Liam bet down to favoritism against this field. And he showed speed from the start. He did a lot of work. He took heat from Create Again, probably from the three-eighths pole till now. And he gets away from Create Again, and you see him starting to get a little bit drifty, maybe feeling the effects of the year plus layoff he ran a solid race he showed some potential earlier in his career for another barn i think it's fascinating that pletcher's running him in this spot uh he has some confidence i would think uh, yeah i agree with that I, this is a horse who could really take a step forward here obviously he's going to have to take a step forward uh, if he's going to win but i feel like he could maybe do that i like some of his races um you know back as a three-year-old before that long layoff it felt like he, he had a lot of upside at that time um, he ran fine last time. It was a terrible field. I feel like that was a race of the day, maybe, that we did, Dan. It was just, there yep. was just nobody in there. And you just sort of knew, even with this horse being away for such a long time, he was just going to win if he if he just had anything left in the tank. I didn't like the way he was drifting at the end either. Um, you know, I, I didn't really know what to do with him, Dan. I would want way, way, way more than five to one if I was going to bet him. Uh, it's okay if you don't remember when the seven Dennis's moment was kind of the buzz horse on a lot of Kentucky Derby lists. He won his maiden as a two-year-old with a 97 buyer. He then won the grade three Iroquois. A lot of people forget that he was the odds-on favorite in the 2019 Breeders' Cup Juvenile. He was the beaten favorite in the 2020 Fountain of Youth. He's gotten to himself as a sprinter, a win two starts back. But that last race we saw, the Mr. Prospector, that was disappointing. It really was. Um, he had a real shot at that thing at the top of the stretch, and he just didn't finish well. Um, I, I'll be honest, I didn't really you know, care for the ride he got necessarily because he got off to a good start in there, and for whatever reason, Lannery decided to raid him back off the pace early. I still don't think that's a huge excuse for him, though. Um, his race two back, I thought, I guess that was fine, too, but he got such a perfect trip that day. I just don't trust this horse anymore, and he's a terrible price on the morning line. I think you could look at the eight speakers corner one of two ways. You can say he right now he is more sizzle than steak. He has run some big races against lesser competition. And when you've stepped him up, it hasn't worked out. I mean, I understand the Pennsylvania Derby was a very tough spot, but he took a lot of money in that race and he was simply awful. And now let's watch his last race, the Discovery, where he was a big favorite at Aqueduct. He was able to get to what I thought was a pretty easy early lead. And turning into the stretch, you would think that speakers corner coming off the big fig is going to get it done. Now, I I do think that Miles D trained by Chad Brown is a nice horse, but I do think this is a bad loss by Speaker's Corner. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to, you know, wholeheartedly disagree with that. Um, but, you know, I, I feel like there are ways to mitigate this loss for this horse. First of all, Dan, I don't think he wants to go this far. Um, he was, to me, he wasn't walking on the lead, but it, it wasn't a wicked fast pace. 
he was just really hard to settle on the lead in that race, I thought. Um, you already mentioned that Miles D is a pretty nice horse in his own right. I just feel like Speaker's Corner got found out by that distance again. You saw him jump to his wrong lead at the end there as he started to drift a little bit. I don't, I don't think the mile and an eighth, this horse wants any part of it. He cuts back to a one-turn mile here. I think he has loads and loads of talent. I think all of his other races are good, save the Pennsylvania Derby. I mean, the race two starts back, um, you know, a one-turn mile and a 63. He ran the 109. He was really, really good that day. Um, first Constitution, who was second, you know, maybe you can have some questions about how good he is, but he did come back to win a stake at uh, Aqueduct the other day with a triple digit buyer. I mean, he beat an okay horse that day. I just feel like Mott's found a really good spot for him here. You've given me some food for thought there because you're right. The race two starts back was a one-turn mile and a 16th, and his two two-turn races haven't been as hot. A one-turn mile is good for him, and I think, according to the time from U.S. Pace Projector and just looking at the PPs, he should be right there when they turn for home. Girolamo's attack was a course and distance winner two starts back. Not sure I really loved that race when he beat Fearless. He was able to get to the lead, and he drifted out considerably in the stretch. Uh, the claiming crown jewel I won't hold against him. He was the beaten favorite, but he didn't get off to a great break. This is a horse that likes to get close. Yeah, cutting back too, I think it could also help this horse, who's going to be a price in this race. He ran fine too back. He beat a pretty nice horse and fearless. Probably can't make the lead in here, but he should be up close to the pace. He's going to be a price if you like him. I mean, he's not for me necessarily, but you know, he's another horse in here. I didn't think it was impossible um, that he couldn't get a piece of this thing. Top pick time for the grade three Fred W. Hooper stakes, uh, Speaker's Corner. Uh, in one, many ways, the horse to beat simply because he has run the fastest races and he still might have a little bit of upside. I have to use him. I'm just curious to see what we get from this Liam. I think he is going to be sent out of there for the Pletcher Barn. Now, listen, with Speaker's Corner breathing down his neck, is he going to be able to fight that horse off and then hold off horses like Fearless? A big ask to be sure. I need him to drift on the tote. You're going speaker's corner. Uh, yeah, I just think it's a good spot for him, Dan. I, I'm not giving up on this horse yet. I think he has a lot of talent. I love him cutting back to the one-turn mile in here from the outside. I, I, I found it you know, hard to find anybody to really um, stand against him with in here. The other horse for me is the two pain. I think he's really underrated. And I feel like if he can show up and run one of his good races, he can get a piece of this. And you saw that Formulator replay ran right onto horse's heels at mid-stretch and then kept right on going. He'll be a price. Speaker's Corner for Mike. Maybe Liam is shot for me, but I'm going to use the other two. In the grade three, Fred W. Hooper Stakes won a seven graded stakes races on Pegasus World Cup Saturday. Good luck.